Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. It's that time of year where we've got that in-between week before the final 100-point Kentucky Derby preps and the and Oaks preps start up next weekend. So, top yeah. 10. Top 10. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey, let's 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 roll with those top ten lists, Matt. Last week was a strange week. Maybe last week should have been an in-between week because the Tampa Bay Derby offered no betting, a, a tote issue, um, a strangely run race. I thought domestic product finished well to win it. Not sure if any of those horses are going to make our list from that race, but a pretty good effort from the Chad Brown trained winner. But Matt, let's go to our number one Kentucky Derby horse. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. We're, we're, we're not counting down. We're starting at the top, Matt. Here it is. Number one on our list is a horse I really like, Sierra Leone, Matt. Sierra Leone is another Chad Brown trainee. He's a son of Gunrunner, uh, Matt. I, I pretty much like all three of his races. He was beaten once, and that came in the Remsen by Dornock. But uh, even the Remsen I like. I'll tell you why I like the Remsen, Matt. He was so far back early. He made a gigantic move in only his second race of his career, going nine furlongs at Aqueduct. Dornock came back at him on the rail and beat him, but I still think that's a huge effort from Sierra Leone and one that he would move forward off of, and I think we probably saw it at the fairgrounds. Yeah, no doubt, Ryan, and that was a huge effort at, at, at uh, in the Remsen at Aqueduct as somebody that uh, watches the races at Aqueduct uh, every single day. It is very, very, very hard to win from that far behind at Aqueduct. You can win from off the pace, but from that far behind is really tough. Yeah, Sierra Leone, impressive in his only loss. Of course, he was a first out winner at Aqueduct going a mile in November, Matt. More recently was the grade two Risen Star, where I think he beat a good field. It did come up with a sloppy and sealed track. In fact, you could see that little bit of the slop there in the picture. Uh, but uh, a, a really nice finish. He was uh, a fourth mid-stretch, and he turned on the afterburners to run down, who, who I think is very good horse track, Phantom in that risen star he'll be leaving louisiana it looks like to go to keeneland next for the bluegrass mat this is my number one you had him high but not quite number one on your list yeah no uh, uh there, there's you really can't knock uh, sierra leone at this point certainly looking like a horse that is going to get the derby distance of a mile and a quarter yeah, I think so. He's a son of gun runner out of a Malibu moon, Merrimat. And uh, don't forget, he was a $2.3 million yearling purchase. Uh, he looks the part, and so far his races have been that good. The next horse on our list, Matt, is your number one. Why don't you tell us who your number one is? My number one uh, is deterministic. Again, Brian, interestingly, another horse that ran uh, at Aqueduct for all those people that love to knock the uh, aqueduct uh, road to the kentucky derby this is this is definitely one of the strongest years in a long long time for aqueduct with two serious contenders not just to make the field but two serious contenders in the top two spots on our uh, kentucky derby list deterministic won the gotham a couple weekends ago in his second start Won his first start at Saratoga, had a had a long time off, but boy, he looked good winning that Gotham. And, and, and after the race, uh, the uh, Christoph Clement's assistant, his son Miguel, uh, boy, uh, he spoke. He said all the right things about describing a horse that should be successful in the Derby. Yeah, and like Sierra Leone, uh, I really like the way he's finishing off his races. Unlike Sierra Leone, though, Sierra Leone has two races at nine furlongs, two turns. Deterministic has not done that yet. So we need to see Deterministic run two turns. We need to see him run longer. Um, he looks like a horse that it won't be a problem, but there is that there is that question. He will come to the Derby a little bit inexperienced. He'll, he'll get one more start. We don't know where that is yet. 
find it very interesting, Matt, that one of the top trainers in the country, Christophe Clement, uh, has not, he, he, he's got no Kentucky Derby experience. Um, I, I think he's a trainer that, uh, that won't be an issue. I think he's one of our best and I think he knows how to get horses ready for 10 furlongs, but it's interesting that Clement will be a, a newbie at the Derby. Of course he won the Belmont stakes before, uh, Christophe Clement, uh, again, a great trainer. This horse looks so good, uh, because he overcame a lot in his debut at Saratoga, a, a, a horse that went, uh, a little bit slowly out of the gate, a wide trip, and again, closed really well. And then you saw that again in the Gotham. And I think, I think it showed something that Clement put him in the, the grade three Gotham um, in, in his second career race and uh, first race off a pretty long layoff. So a big performance. Matt and I both like deterministic. Matt has him at number one. You ready for number three? Yep, let's go. Well, we, we, we did both of our number ones, so we can't have any more number ones on this list. But obviously, number three is a horse we both still like. Fierceness, Matt. Fierceness is in again, out again, uh, inconsistent, uh, uh, coming off a dis disappointing race. You can say all those things about the Son of City of Light, yet we still have him as our consensus number three. Wait, tell me why. I think we have to, Brian, based on that Breeders' Cup uh, juvenile performance. That performance is as good as any performance from any of the horses that we are going to talk about on this list of uh, beating a big field, beating a, beating a good field and doing it uh, uh, f in a fast performance. And, and that yeah. is important. Yeah, it, it, it was a big performance out at Santa Anita in November. The Breeders' Cup Juvenile was the uh, determining a race, of course, for a championship last year in fierceness. Uh, beat a very good field for fun out there. He really did. He won by more than six lengths, fast time, much, much faster than the two Phillies ran the same afternoon. Uh, just a very impressive performance. City of Light out of a stay thirsty mare uh, came out of the gate uh, rolling. Uh, won his debut at Saratoga by more than 11 lengths in very fast time. Then the Champagne broke poorly in the slop in the champagne and was way, way behind Timberlake. Of course, Timberlake was one of the horses he left far behind in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Last time in the Holy Bowl, he kind of uh, stalked, pressed. Uh, Hades was uh, a little bit of a unknown at the time, but Fierceness could not get by him when the real running began and kind of faded to third a little bit. He'll need to move forward. He's working well for trainer Todd Pletcher, but we need to see a better effort next time from Fierceness. If we could to consider him this high on our list, looks like it'll come in the Florida Derby. Yeah, that's for sure. He's. We're going to need to see the the Breeders' Cup version of fierceness, uh, not only in the Florida Derby, but uh, uh, going beyond that. One concern I do have is fierceness. I, I said he broke a little slowly in the Champagne. He also broke just a little slowly in the Holy Ball. Uh, uh, that could be an issue when we get to 20 horses, a uh, 20 horse starting gate in the Kentucky Derby. So fierceness will have to get over that uh, gate issue because he wants to be pretty close to the lead. He'll also have to get over the fact of maybe not running his best when there is a little bit of adversity that we saw in both the Champagne and the uh, and the recent Holy Bowl. For Florida Derby next, working well. We still like fierceness. We're about to get to four to ten, Matt. Who's our who's our number four? You have them, or do you want to see the list? There's, there's the list. Well, I got them. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, we've got Timberlake uh, in the number four spot. Timberlake is currently the points leader for uh, the Kentucky Derby, and most of the horses that we have on our list uh, already have enough points to run in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, we got a couple on the list that maybe need to do more, but in other years, not so much. Uh, Timberlake got those points, uh, uh, the big chunk of them in the Rebel uh, recently, which was a nice comeback performance in his 2024 debut, following a fourth in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile. And he was the winner of the champagne that you mentioned. Another one uh, uh, for Brad Cox here. 
Yeah, Brad, Brad Cox is always well represented. We'll see a couple Brad Coxes on the list. As you can see, if you're looking at our list, uh, Timberlake, the highest Brad Cox, but he, ha as always, has a bunch of nice three-year-olds. Timberlake, uh, maybe maybe we could say a little bit uh, about Timberlake that we did about Fierceness Mad and that Timberlake is just a little on again, off again. Um, faded in his career debut, came back with a giant maiden win in his second career start. Couldn't quite get the job done in a hopeful, but it wasn't a bad race at all. Then he then he won the Champagne easily. Breeders' Cup Juvenile, never really close to Fierceness. Fourth, eight lengths back. Not a bad performance, but certainly Fierceness much better. Then he returned, as you said, in the Rebel, and that was a, a nice performance. I'm not sure if that was the, the strongest field we've seen among the three-year-old preps this year, but uh, Timberlake uh, ran a little wide and uh, look good, look like the best horse for sure in the Rebel. And as you say, he's the points leader. That, that's something. Another horse who may be a little bit in and, in and out, you had him higher on your list than mine, but I too like Mystic Dan, number five. Mystic Dan, the breeding worries me just a little bit. I, I've come to be less of a uh, hard-nosed, staunch, if you're not bred for 10 furlongs, you can't win the Derby in recent years. But uh, Mystic Dan being a son of Golden Sense, I think there are distance questions he'll have to answer. Yeah, and I think he'll have to answer uh, uh, questions also because his big win, which came in the, in the Southwest Stakes at Oaklawn Park, which was a which was a very fast performance by eight lengths, came on a muddy and sealed track. Uh, it, it's not something that we can say about many horses on the list that they have a fast victory, but Mystic Dan is one of them. Yeah, Mystic Dan's performance in the Southwest was very good and uh, visually impressive. Maybe the rail was the place to be, but he just zipped away from uh, pretty good competition, I think, in, in the Southwest. He won that by eight lengths. That's his uh, uh, most recent start. But uh, again, I said in and out a little bit. He was beaten in the Smarty Jones, kind of in between horses, faded a little bit, didn't have the best trip, was beaten just over three lengths, but he was beaten there. And he was beaten the race, uh, the last race of his two-year-old season. Now, I'm, I'm a little less worried about the track condition of the uh, Southwest because he has a big performance, another big performance, kind of like fierceness on his past performances. And that came at Churchill Downs. I realize it was only five and a half furlongs, but it was one of the fastest maiden races we saw all last year when he won by almost eight lengths, uh, going five and a half furlongs in 103 and one. So he showed his talent over a fast track at Churchill Downs. That's something to remember about Mystic Dan. I know Ken McPeak has a lot of confidence in this horse, and he's waiting for the Arkansas Derby after that win in the Southwest in early February. Definitely a talented horse. We're keeping an eye on here at Horse Center. Number six, I had a little bit higher on my list than you did. Uh, door knock, uh, I, I guess three, four, five, six, maybe even seven were all relatively close on our consensus here. But Doorknock, I had a little bit higher. Doorknock is the horse that the only horse to beat Sierra Leone, our number one so far. That was a really brave performance in the Remsen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, uh, his position in our top 10 is because of that performance in the Remsen, where he beat Sierra Leone, obviously flattered by uh, Sierra Leone's later success. Doorknock came back and won the uh, Fountain of Youth. At, uh, at Gulfstream Park in a field that regrettably ended up being not nearly as strong as uh, the entry showed. Yeah, that's true. The Fountain of Youth was uh, decimated by scratches for sure. But uh, on the other hand, I get the feeling that Doorknock did uh, plenty to win the race, but there could have been more if he needed more. I guess we kind of saw more in the Remsen. Doorknock has run five races Doorknock has run uh, uh, two turns on uh, three or four occasions, at least three occasions. He's bred to get the distance. I think there's a lot to like here for a horse who's shown some heart, a horse who's bred to get 10 furlongs. Remember, Good Magic was second in the Kentucky Derby to uh, Justify uh, several years ago. Uh, Doorknock, a lot to like. I understand that the Fountain of Youth was uh, decimated, and I understand that he didn't exactly run away from those horses like we might have thought he would do. But I expect Doorknock to move forward, and Doorknock, uh, to me, is still 
one of the top horses. Again, a full brother to May should be crazy if we had full brothers win consecutive Kentucky Derbies. Number seven on our list, Matt, is Track Phantom. And I look at Track Phantom's uh, past performances, and he's a horse uh, who's raced quite a bit, even more than Doorknock. He's raced six times already. I can't find any bad races, including his last one, where he was pretty narrowly beaten by our number one. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, 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 Steve Asmussen still looking for that first uh, Derby victory. He's got enough points to get in the race already. Uh, it was second last time in the, the Risen Star, beaten by only a, only a half length. Um, you know, I again, I think the breeding is there, being uh, 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 you know. Uh, uh, a son of a son of uh, quality road, um, and and uh, if he, he follows the path of uh, a lot of Asmus and horses, looks like the kind that you know is going to get better throughout his career. Get better throughout his career. He's got good tactical speed. He's proven at Churchill Downs. He's been running at that long stretch at Fairgrounds. He's run three good races now at Fairgrounds. Uh, going back to the end, very end of last year, Truck Phantom is a horse I think a lot of people have jumped off because Sierra Leone powered by late. But Truck Phantom's been a nice horse who deserves a lot of respect. Number eight, I'm not sure how much number eight uh, respect number eight has earned yet. His name, number eight on our list, of course, is Just a Touch. The son of Justify, there's that trainer again, Brad Cox. Just a Touch has only one stakes uh, experience uh, race under his belt. And it was a good race, but deterministic was better in the Gotham. Yeah, uh, um, he was better, but uh, and and I think that Brad Cox made the jump from uh, a super impressive maiden special weight victory uh, into the Gotham because of that maiden performance. And and hey, we've got uh, just a touch on the list because he ran a good second beat behind the number two horse on our list yeah yeah uh, enough said uh, the one thing about just a touch as much as deterministic he'll need to prove it at two turns he'll uh, uh need to prove it maybe against tougher competition but uh, just a touch has looked good that the, the maiden win came on an off track the gotham second came on an off track justify out of a uh, top at mayor doesn't scream off track to me so we suspect that just a touch will be fine on a uh, on a faster track and going longer uh but uh, we don't know for sure yet but his first two races a lot of uh, a lot to like there for just a touch hades hades didn't make my list and he probably should have you had him on your list matt hades has really done nothing wrong i i, I guess i'm stuck on the fact that his first two races really came against cheaper competition but then last time he beat fierceness uh fierceness asked him at the head of the stretch in the Holy Bowl. And Haiti said, uh, not today, buddy, and uh, and, and won nicely. Haiti's three for three, son of awesome slew. Right, you said done little wrong, three for three. for three. He's a Florida bred, Brian, and I think that's part of what you were saying about his early races. Uh, he won a maiden special weight and then had an allowance win. It was against Florida bred. So up to that point, you got to say, okay, you know, what, what have you got? And uh, in the uh, Holy Bull, he showed that uh, he could beat a, a, a pretty good field of Derby hopefuls. We'll see. He's going to have to show more in the next start. Florida Derby looks next for the Joe Orsino uh, trained horse. And Joe Orsino's had good horses before. Really liked Hades' last workout. Uh, good speed. This is a horse who wouldn't shock, wouldn't shock anybody this time if he won the Florida Derby coming up in a couple of weeks. Finally, the horse uh, number 10. I like a lot, Matt. I had him on my list. You didn't have him on your list. Conquest Warrior is a horse with zero Kentucky Derby points, but I've really been impressed with his two races this year. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, he had a, a nice allowance win uh, at Gulfstream Park at the beginning of March. So uh, Veteran trainer Shug McGahee, who knows how to win the Kentucky Derby, knows how to get a horse ready for a big race. Uh, um, opting to go with a the more you know traditional uh, 
a pattern of made in special weight and then into an allowance. So he's going to have to pick up uh, points in his uh, in his next start in a hundred pointer. But you know he can get enough points uh, from a first or uh, even a second, and in some years a third. Yeah, Conquest Warrior certainly will have the opportunity to pr- uh, uh, prove that he belongs in the 10 for long Kentucky Derby, but he's looked like a derby horse to me. Uh, in that maiden win early this year, he had all sorts of trouble early, even got blocked a little bit on the turn and still came flying to win that, and then he won an allowance race, probably not over a great field, uh, but uh, he did win that allowance race very impressively, running away from them down the stretch at nine furlongs. I think Conquest Warrior is a graded stakes caliber horse for Shug McGahee. Shug McGahee doesn't run a lot of horses in the Derby, but I think this one is one that he will get in the Derby. But like he said, he needs to get, get some points next time. In his last, so many good horses, Matt. Uh, there, there's probably at least ten Colts that we could have added into our top ten that I would have said, okay, there's no problem having them in the top ten. Uh, so uh, no, no offense, no insult meant to any of those horses who did not make our consensus top ten. Um, like I said, it, it could have been a top twenty real easy. Let's get to the Phillies though. The Kentucky Oaks is next, just like the Derby. We're going to start with our number one. This is a filly I've been high on since I saw her last fall at Churchill Downs. Her name is Intricate. I don't think uh, a lot of people are going to have Intricate on their list, and maybe maybe that's something to think about in the future wager happening this weekend, Matt. Uh, Intricate, though, had a big win last fall, uh, winning the Golden Rod, the Grade 2 Golden Rod, where she just ran away from some good competition late November at Churchill Downs. So she has good experience over the track. And to tell you the truth, I like her first race of the three-year-old season quite a bit. Sloppy track where she was a little bit uh, uh, farther off the pace than probably she wanted to be on that type of track. But Intricate rallied nicely to be second behind a big performance. Big performance. Again, uh, and no surprise, uh, uh, this is a, a horse that's sired by Gunrunner training. Brandon Walsh, I think, you know, uh, realizes at this point uh, – uh, maybe not having uh, the horse cranked fully for the Rachel Alexandra. Uh, Intricate's got 35 points already, probably enough to get into the Oaks at, at this point. And uh, uh, um, he'll have her uh, on the top of her game for her next start for sure. Yeah, I think she'll move forward and start number two. Kentucky Oaks will be start number three of the season for the daughter of Gunrunner. And I really do like everything about her, including, again, her value right now, because you won't see a lot of people with uh, Intricate at the top of their list. But uh, I love Intricate. Matt likes Intricate as well. Uh, she will be a horse that nine furlongs at Churchill Downs should be right up her alley. Let's go to number two on the list, Matt. And number two is a filly who was a bit of a long shot when she ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, Phillies last year. She was 17-1 to off of two really nice wins in New York out at Santa Anita, and she was running well. Just FYI, of course, was the winner, but uh, don't forget that Jody's Pride was gaining on her late, was only beating the neck in that Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. She came back recently with a win at Aqueduct. Yep, uh, trained by uh, Jorge Abreu former assistant of uh of chad brown uh, um, got uh, tons of points already to get into the race uh so uh i i've i've been impressed by jody's pride was a stakes winner early in her career as a two-year-old in the matron so uh um a, a daughter of american pharaoh out of a scat daddy mare. So another one that uh, uh, looks like the, and from what we saw in the Risen Star, uh, sorry, in the, in the Rachel Alexandra, um, the mile and eighth distance of the Oaks should be no problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. And and she was stretching out. It, it's interesting about Jody's Pride match. She was um, met, meant for turf as a daughter of American Pharaoh early on. Her first two races were both supposed to be on the grass. But she looked good on the dirt sprinting, including that win, uh, stakes win in the Matron. She stretched out really nicely in a mile 16th in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Like I said, she was finishing very well in that race. 
And I think the busher, people are going to look at the busher and say, eh. But uh, I think there were some decent horses behind her. The Aqueduct has been better this year, both on the male and certainly on the male side. And I think is on the Philly side as well. So I think that it was a good return race in the busher. She powered away late to win that. Jody's pride looks like a Philly to me that deserves a high standing in the Kentucky Oaks rankings. Uh, number three on our list, Matt, I, I think will be the current favorite. I think we'll see the future wager favorite as the number three horse on our list. Uh, she's a daughter of Bernardini named Tarifa. Brad Cox is the trainer, and she's coming off a really impressive win last time in the Rachel Alexandra. Yeah, impressive victory in that race for uh, Brad Cox. Three wins out of four starts. Impressive because uh, 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 she beat, as we already beat our uh, second on the list in Jody's, uh, Jody's Pride, another horse that is certainly bred for, to, for that mile and an eighth distance, Bernardini, and awesome again in her bloodline. Yeah, she she actually beat our number one intricate last time in the Rachel Alexander. Oh yeah, Tarifa, yeah. yeah. Tarifa, uh, three for four. You know, she was two for three in her first three races, including a loss at Churchill Downs and allowance race in her second start. Good maiden win, but in none of those three races did I say, "Wow, she's a Kentucky Oaks favorite." But then she uh, she moved the needle up. Certainly, the uh, Godolphin homebred did last time on that wet track in the Rachel Alexandra. She stalked, she pounced, and she beat Intricate by uh, nearly three lengths. So there's good reason to like Tarifa um, uh, after the last performance, especially. Like I said, though, she she might be the favorite. She's probably the favorite this weekend in the future wager. I like Intricate better coming out of that Rachel Alexandra. We'll see. Let's go to the uh, remainder of our top 10 for the Kentucky Oaks now, Matt. Uh, you might be surprised that we have Lemon Muffin. What a name, Lemon Muffin, as number four on the list because Lemon Muffin, you look at that record, she's only won one start out of four. But uh, there's there's a lot that, uh, that there's a lot to like here because she was sprinting and she was sprinting pretty well. In fact, she ran second in four consecutive maiden sprints. It looked like in her last start, she wants two turns. And that stretch out that she did in the honeybee. That was impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, you know, the, the, the story just keeps going on and on and on for Hall of Fame trainer uh, D. Wayne Lucas. He, he, still, he still has some good horses. He still wins big races. And, and, uh, and uh, what a surprise with Lemon Muffin in that honeybee. Uh, she won that race is still a maiden in her sixth start. Yeah, and, and she she looked the part of a really good graded stakes two turn filly in that uh, in that race where she was bumped a little bit. She 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 looked like a winner as soon as she got clear in the stretch and she won off by three and a half lengths. I think it was a good field that day, a solid field in the Honey Bee. Um, she'll be staying at Arkansas for D. Wayne Lucas, who I want to say is 88. He's, he's either eight or 88 or 89. Un unbelievable that he is still doing what he's doing at his age. Good for D. Wayne Lucas and uh, Lemon Muffin, probably higher on the list, on our list than you'll see on most, uh, but uh, uh, one for one in two turn races. Number five, finally, we get to the two year old champion, the undefeated two year old champion, daughter of Justify, trained by Bill Mott. Why, oh, why has she fallen all the way to number five on our list, Matt? You want to explain first, or you want me to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I, 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 I worry. I, I worry about a horse who hasn't started yet. And, of course, she was scratched out of a out of a uh, entry recently in the Devona Dale. So there was a, a little bit of an issue, scratched out of the Devona Dale. Mott's going to try to get her one race before the Oaks. And you'll see on our list, not just her, but other potentially really good 3 year Phillies didn't even make the list because they haven't run yet this year. And just FYI is now behind the eight ball. Yeah, no doubt, Brian. Uh, and it, and you have to be concerned, even though uh, uh, she does have uh, she does have forty points already, so she doesn't need to win a race to get into the Oaks, but we're talking about, Brian, what are we, um, just a month and a half away from the Kentucky Oaks, and, and you know, we're talking about 
a race that is going to have one of the best fields uh, of the year, the best field in it for three-year-old fillies, a field better than she faced in the uh, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Um, but uh, yeah, at this point, without a start, you have to be concerned. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's testament to her to be number five on our list without that start, having missed the Devona Dale. I think she will get uh, a start before the Oaks, you know, uh, knock on wood. Hopefully it's all well. It's supposed to be a very minor uh, thing where she will be back in training and then get that start for the Oaks, but uh, it's tough. Like Matt says, it's a 14-horse deep and strong field in the Kentucky Oaks. I like other Phillies' chances a little bit better at this point to win the Kentucky Oaks, considering where she is right now. Number six, I think, is a Philly, Matt, that's uh, just a little bit under the radar. We're talking about a daughter of Union Rags named Power Squeeze. Now, Power Squeeze has not won a graded six race yet. But on the other hand, I have a hard time finding a three-year-old Philly who's done more this year than Power Squeeze because she's won two stakes races in Florida, one on either side of the state, and she looked good doing it. Yeah, she certainly did. She won the Sun Coast at uh, Tampa Bay Downs uh, most recently, and before that, she won the Cash Run, which was a sprint but stretched out nicely in that race at Tampa. Yeah, the, the race before was the cash run, uh, a, a mile, and then the Sun Coast a little bit more than a mile. She closes well. She looks like a filly that wants more distance. We're expecting a, a few of these fillies to be headed to the Gulfstream Park Oaks. Power Squeeze is one of them. Uh, Power Squeeze trained, trained by Jorge Delgado, of course, and uh, we could be looking at the Gulfstream Park's Oaks winner there. We'll see, but so far so good this year for Power Squeeze. Number seven is probably not the best California Philly, uh, three-year-old Philly out there, Matt. Uh, that Philly's name would be Kinza. Kinza, of course, is trained by Bob Baffert. Kinza will not be allowed to run in the Kentucky Oaks. It looks like the second best Philly out in California right now is Copian. Copian is a daughter of Omaha Beach, trained by Richard Mandela. Only one horse has beaten her so far, and that is Kinza. Yeah, uh, so there you go. Uh, and uh, any horse trained by Richard Mandela, in my opinion, is dangerous. He, there's nobody better at preparing a horse for a particular spot. Um, you mentioned uh, second in the Las Virgenes, uh, a grade three behind that uh, Baffert horse. But before that, uh, Copian was a very impressive winner of the Santa Inez grade three by almost six lengths. Yeah, she looked good winning her first two starts in November and January, including that Santa Inez going seven furlongs. She could she could just, Kinza, Kinza's a little faster and she could never run down Kinza in, in the Las Virginies last time, but that that's probably not uh, something to worry about too much. Kinza's really talented and fast. Uh, Copian is a horse that uh, probably will be better suited anyway when when the distances increase and maybe as a as a uh, Brudmere sire victory gallop and, and maybe when she comes out to Churchill Downs an interesting horse for a spendthrift and Richard Mandela number eight on our list Matt uh, another horse who has yet to run in a stakes race or a graded stakes race but she's yet to run in any stakes race her name is Impel Impel is a daughter of Quality Road. We've seen a lot of good daughters of Quality Road lately. Impel could be another one, judging from her first two starts for trainer Brad Cox. Yep, another uh, another Brad Cox in here. Uh, with this one, he was opting to take a little bit more of a slower pace and not send uh, 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 her into uh, a stakes race in her second, second start. But boy, she looked good going two turns at Oak Lawn Park in an allowance race that she won by more than eight lengths. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where Impel ends up next. That that allowance win was just March 3rd, so pretty recent. But uh, she did it at two different tracks, Fairgrounds and Oakland Park. She did it at six furlongs. She did it on mile 16. Two starts for the Judmont Philly have looked really, really good. The next two Phillies on our list are both coming out of the Devona Dale that just FYI scratched out of. We could have also had the third horse in, in the Devona Dale on this list as well. We went with Into Champagne 
as number nine. Fiona's Magic as number 10. Into Champagne was the one that finished second for trainer Ian Wilkes. Yep, from uh, uh, from the barn of Ian Wilkes, another uh, a fantastic trainer um, that has a, has a good horse here. Uh, um, picked up 25 points from that second in the Devona Dale. Uh, won the Glitter Woman before that and a nice maiden special weight. So uh, a horse that I think has a good future. Yeah, she certainly looks like a uh, filly with a good future, a daughter of Into Mischief. We've seen a lot of good Into Mischief fillies as well over the years. Into Champagne could never run down Fiona's magic in that Devona Dale. Not such a bad thing moving forward. If she does move forward and take a step forward, certainly eligible to do that for trainer Ian Wilkes. And the filly that went all the way in that Devona Dale, Fiona's magic has been really good. Five starts. Michael Yates may be a trainer a little bit under the radar, but he's a good trainer down there in South Florida. This daughter, St. Patrick's Day, has been consistent, and she's got really good speed. Really good speed and took a step forward to get that victory uh, in the Devona Dale. Had a <coughs> second in the forward gal uh, at Gulfstream Park also before that. Got plenty of points uh, uh, and has a spot in the Oaks field already. Yeah, we should see Fiona's Magic one more time, probably in the Gulfstream Park Oaks. And, and several of those villas, I think, are pointing for the Gulfstream Park Oaks. So that'll be one of the races we're watching. We'll also be watching Fairgrounds next week, Matt, because it's going to be a big week at Fairgrounds a week from next a week from this Saturday. Uh, but for now, we wanted to get our top tens out, Matt. It's always fun to do this. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Hey, you know, Brian, uh, um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, I think our Kentucky Derby top 10 list at this point, you know, uh, I, I feel like the Kentucky Derby winner is probably on that list. I don't know where, why we should expect somebody new to pop up uh, with just one round of, uh, of Derby preps left. So uh, uh, that's interesting. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the, there's a Kentucky Derby future wager uh this weekend i don't usually bet much on those but i'm gonna keep an eye on that and see what kind of price deterministic is in that pool um and uh, changing topics i want to thank our uh, friends and colleagues from eclipse sports wire photography uh who horse racing nation partners with for the really great photos that were in our graphics during the show yeah, thanks to Eclipse Sportswire, Matt. Well said uh, all the way around. Yeah, the, the, not only is the Derby future this week, but also the uh, only Oaks future is this week. Oaks Derby double. So that's uh, something a little bit more fun to look at as we're only about seven weeks out. As always, I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that now for us. We sure appreciate you tuning in. Matt and I know we're going to get a lot of new visitors uh, as we get closer to derby but we sure appreciate our regular watchers we love you what else can we say uh matt next week as i said we're going to uh go down to new orleans and check it out a big weekend at fairgrounds until then though have a great week maybe do a little dabbling in these oaks and derby future wagers hopefully our top 10 rundown helped you out we'll see you next week right here on horse center